Welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith, where large language models like ChatGPT collide with creative writing. I'm Angie. When I posted the AI Writing Coach GPT video a few weeks ago, someone asked me to cover the differences between custom instructions, which I sometimes refer to as personas, and a custom GPT. Now, I wasn't quite ready to answer the question at the time because I'd only created just a few custom GPTs, but now I'm ready to give you my take on the subject, along with what I feel are the pros and cons of each, use cases, as well as starting a discussion on what's next in customizing the responses from ChatGPT and other LLMs. We'll get started today by taking a look at what are custom instructions. So first, let's talk about where you can access the custom instructions from within the ChatGPT window. So you need to go, there's a section, if you click on your picture, it says customize ChatGPT. When you click on that, it'll give you the window to where you're able to go ahead and enter custom instructions. Now, the custom instructions are actually a system prompt that tells ChatGPT that it's supposed to do something when it considers a response to your question or your prompt. So you're able to have it answer in a specific tone, such as friendly or casual or professional. You also can control the length of the response. So whether you want it to be a short response, something that's concise, or something that's much longer. You can also tell it what name or what you want to be called. Honestly, if you wanted to, you could have a custom instruction that just tells uh, ChatGPT to respond and say, my name is Angie, or I want you to call me Princess Glitter Sparkles. It, it just depends on how you enter the prompt into the custom instructions. Now, remember I mentioned persona? Basically, with a custom instruction, you're giving it a persona and telling it, I want you to be blank, who knows blank, and you provide blank. Also, within a custom instruction, you can let ChatGPT know whether it should be objective, whether it has an opinion or it should remain neutral. Now, in the box, actually, there's two boxes. There are two different questions. What would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? And then it has a 1500 character limit. That's the top box. Now, the bottom box is how would you like ChatGPT to respond? And then again, a 1500 character box. Now, one thing about custom instructions is that they're available on all plans. They're also available on the web, iOS, as well as Android. Okay, so let's move on to custom GPTs. So there's three ma uh, main ways that you can get to custom GPTs. So you can click on the link that says explore GPTs. You can click on your picture in the bottom left-hand corner and go up to my GPTs and then select one of those GPTs. And you also can click on a specific GPT in your sidebar. At its core, a custom GPT is really a custom version of chat GPT that's created to allow you to perform either specific tasks or have information about specific topics. So it allows you to have instructions. So going back to the previous example with custom instructions, you are a blank. It also allows you to provide knowledge to that chat GPT instance. So who knows blank. And then it also allows you to provide specific capabilities to that instance of chat GPT. So you provide blank. But you edit the custom GPT through the GPT builder. Now there's two tabs. There's one that's called create and there's one that's called configure. And I believe I've shown both of these on previous videos. Now, if you click on the configure tab, you actually can make changes and go a little bit further. So at the top, you have the GPT image. You can either use Dolly to create a new one or you can upload an image of your own. There's a description which allows you to show what the GPT does. There's instructions, which is the prompt for the GPT, and it tells it how to interact with the person on the other end of the GPT. There's also conversation starters, which give you a launch point for interacting with the GPT. So you don't have to start with a blank slate. Also, there's knowledge, which allows you to upload different files. I've shared in the past that text files and PDF files are the ones that I have used and have had pretty good luck with. 
There's also capabilities. You're able to turn on or turn off whether it can browse the web, whether it can create images with Dolly, or whether you're able to use the code interpreter. Now, it goes a little bit further and allows you to do actions, which allows you to retrieve information or take actions outside of ChatGPT. Custom GPT is only available to Plus and Enterprise customers. Okay, so we've talked about custom instructions. We've talked about custom GPTs. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each one. So we'll start with custom instructions. And here are the pros. So they're available to members who aren't on the Plus plan. They're easy to implement and to update because they're prompt based. So basically, it's just a matter of editing some text, and that's how you change your custom instructions. It also works with text browsing, code interpreter, and images. Now, code interpreter and the images are, I believe, only available to customers on the Plus plan. Okay, let's move on to the cons. So it's easy to forget if you have custom instructions enabled. I can't tell you how many times I've started having a conversation in ChatGPT only to realize that my custom instructions were on and I started talking about something that had absolutely nothing to do with my custom instructions. Also, you can only have one custom instruction prompt stored at any time. So it's, it's just got those two boxes. If you want to change from one persona to another persona, you have to go copy it from wherever you store it. I have probably about 20 to 30 of them and I store them all in Notion. But you go and you copy it and you have to delete out the other one and put the new one in and hopefully you got everything in right. You didn't skip something. If you want to make a change to your custom instructions, you have to start a new chat. So if you're having a discussion and you realize you forgot something, you have to start over from scratch in a whole new chat. You can't go back in and edit it. And then also, there's a 3,000 character limit between the two different boxes. So that's something that I have found to be limiting because my custom instructions are typically rather long. Let's move on to custom GPT. We'll start with the pros. So you don't need to know how to code to get custom results. I have done a couple of videos where I've walked you through how to create a custom GPT. And they're pretty easy to do as long as you understand how prompting works. GPT is stored in ChatGPT and can be launched with just a couple clicks. GPT-1 is different than GPT-2, but you can access both of them quite as easily from your ChatGPT interface. There's no going into another document and copying and pasting. It's really quite easy to do. It also allows you to do more complex tasks than custom instructions. You can also call a GPT into a conversation and then remove it when you're done. I showed this in the video yesterday where I was in a regular chat GPT window. I put at and then the name of the GPT, started asking it some questions, giving it context from earlier in the conversation. And then when I was done with it, I told it, there's the door. And then also you are able to save your reference documents inside of a GPT and it allows you to reference them for all of your conversations. So this leads to being more consistent. It allows you to be more consistent because it's got the same information each time you have a conversation with it. Okay, let's move on to the cons. So custom GPTs are not available to free members. The GPT builder can be slow, buggy, and sometimes it's inconsistent. Sometimes it skips steps. I think we've actually seen that in the videos as well, that it'll just completely go past a step and move on to the next one. I've noticed using GPTs that it's a little bit slower in providing responses than when I just put in some custom instructions. And then I've also noticed that it can be a little bit complicated if you need to change something to your GPT. Okay, so now that we've covered the pros and cons, both of custom instructions and custom GPTs, let's move along to use cases. So these are the use cases of how I have used custom instructions. So I actually have custom instruction persona created for every single one of my pen names. I'm putting in there that I'm a writer. I'm putting in there who my audience is. I use it to keep me on task and keep me focused on my audience. 
I also use it for writing styles. If I want to write in a specific style and I not all my pen names even write in the same style, I can go ahead and create a writing style for each of my pen names and then I can use it to write a draft. And then I can go through, edit it myself, add my own voice, and there I go. You can also use custom instructions for art styles. I've created a persona of a cover artist with a specific style and was pretty consistent in creating book covers of a certain style. I've also used it as a professional artist. So I had a professional artist style and put that in there. And again, I was able to come up with better consistency in some of the images that Dolly created by using that artist style. Okay, on to custom GPTs. Great ways to use custom GPTs is to use it as a professional. So you are a writing coach, you're a developmental editor, you are a brand strategist. So you're telling it, hey, you are this person, you have this experience, and this is what you are able to do for me. I've been able to put in information about a project that I'm working on, such as working on a website, and talk to my brand strategist, GPT, and have it give me suggestions. You can also create a custom GPT for a business, a website, or a brand. I actually did this for my Bite Size Booksmith channel, and I put some specific information inside of my GPT that I'm able to reference every time I have a discussion with my GPT. Let's move on to what's next. I don't know if you've realized this, but custom instructions came out first and then it evolved into custom GPTs. So what's next? I'm putting that out there. What do you think is going to be next? So let's go ahead and wrap it up. So we've talked about custom instructions, custom GPTs, pros and cons of both, use cases. I'd like to go ahead and invite you to like the video, subscribe to Bite Size Booksmith if you want to see more videos like this. We also get into other topics regarding LLMs as well as Novel Crafter. Now, I'd like you to comment, have you used custom instructions or GPTs? If you've used them both, which one do you prefer? And what would you like to create? So if you could create any kind of GPT in the world, what kind of GPT would you like to create? What would make your life easier? Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it here for today. You guys have an amazing day and amazing week because it's Monday. And I'll talk to you guys later.